Hey everybody, and welcome back to my video series about what it's like to teach at the university level in China. In today's video, I'm going to go back through my history in China and tell you about the places that I worked and some things that I learned from each of the schools. So if you'd be interested to hear about that, I want to warmly welcome you to like and subscribe because I plan to put out more videos about what it's like to teach and specifically to teach in China. So I came to China, uh, the first time was in 2011 and I went to Guilin and I worked at Guangxi Shifan Dashui, that's Guangxi Normal University. And I think the most important thing that I learned from that experience was just how valuable it can be to get outside of your comfort zone and to travel, for example, to a foreign country and try something completely new. So if you're thinking about moving abroad and perhaps to China to teach, I highly recommend it. Of course, there will be challenges, but you will grow a lot through the experience. And another thing I'll add about Guilin is it's a popular place for foreigners to go and there's a very rich mixture of international students and teachers there. So that was also very fun and very enriching. I was there for two years and after that I decided it was again time to try something new and see more of China. So I moved to Jiangsu province and I worked in a city called Changzhou. The school was called Jiangsu Ligong Shiyuan and that is the Jiangsu University of Science and Technology. And that was a bit of a change because I moved from a university in Guilin that had about 25 foreign teachers to a university that had, well, there was maybe about anywhere from five to 10 foreign teachers at a time, but there was only like three or four English teachers. The others were German. And uh, so I'm most closely associated with the English teachers and that taught me something which is you want to think about what size of a foreign teaching staff you'd like to be a part of because in China you'll find a wide range you'll find some schools where you might be the only foreign teacher anywhere uh, on the spectrum from you being the only one up to 30 or 40 or even more so that can really affect what your work experience is going to be like if you work at a university that has a much smaller staff of foreign teachers, then you better hope you get along with those people or it could be a little bit weird, a little bit awkward. If you prefer to really immerse yourself in the Chinese experience and you are wary of being caught in the bubble of foreign teachers where you tend to only associate with foreign teachers and communicate with foreign teachers, then you might like to go to a university where you are the only foreign teacher. On the other hand, if you want more support from a community of people who share your worldview and resonate with you, if you think that would help you survive and thrive in a new country, then you should probably go to a university with a larger foreign teaching staff because they will be able to show you the ropes. So after Jiangsu province, I again uh, I spent a year there, and then I wanted to continue to move further north because I am from the Washington DC area. I'm used to four seasons. I like cool weather, I like snow. I wanted to keep exploring and moving further north in China. So I went to Shandong province and I worked in a city called Ruzhou. And that is a city that's a couple hours south of Qingdao, which is, and it's also on the coast, like Qingdao. And I worked at a university called Ruzhou Zhiye Jishu Shui Yuan, that is Ruzhou Polytechnic. And that was sort of like a vocational three-year school for college-level students. And I really loved that city. I really, it's, it's, it's just such a beautiful place. There's these rugged sort of mountains and farms that slope right down to the beaches and the coast. So if you go inland, you can explore the beautiful agriculture and mountains. And if you head just a few minutes 
I mean, the, the ocean side is just a few minutes from that university, and there's several universities around there in a college town. There's probably like five or six, not only that one that I worked at. And um, what I learned from my experience at Rujal Polytechnic, a realization at Rujal Polytechnic dawned upon me because there was a term at Rujal Polytechnic where I had very few teaching hours. You will see these teaching, uh, these teaching jobs in China sometimes where you may only have 16 teaching hours per week. And I think in one term at that school, I might have had even less. I might have had like 14 or 15. So I had a tremendous amount of free time. I think I had two or three days off between Monday and Friday in addition to the weekend. And that's when I had an important realization that if you intend to be a foreign teacher teaching languages in China for long, it's really important to learn how to use your free time constructively, or you might unintentionally destroy your own self-growth and your own career and your own future job prospects because it's very easy to whittle away the free time doing nothing much at all, just enjoying yourself and traveling around and you're not really developing yourself. So that's when I realized I needed to start to use my free time constructively and I started to build a business around language learning card games. You can see some of that on my channel here. But I have another channel for that now called Legendary Language Learner. So you could check out what I've been able to do with my free time in China, which is to start to build a business. And I taught business English students at that school. And this was kind of a project that we began together because they were interested to start their own businesses as well. So again, this comes back to learning and growing and being inspired in a foreign country with foreign students. So after one year at Rujiao Polytechnic, I again moved north. I moved to Liaoning Province to a university called Liaoning Shifan Daishui, that is Liaoning Normal University. And that school is in Dalian. And I worked there for two years, but I kind of unwittingly uh, got, got got myself a job or got hired into what was a training center or a chain of training centers that would embed themselves inside of universities. So in other words, they had contracts with universities and they would send their teachers into the universities to teach some of the classes. So I thought I was working directly for the university, but it turned out I was working for like a company that was inside of the university. So that's a lesson in and of itself. Be clear about who exactly is hiring you and who you're working for. I didn't really understand how I missed that, but it wasn't a big deal in the end. The, the job kind of ended up being the same. Um, I taught university students at night, which was kind of fun for this, again, this training center, this training school. And I also taught for this training center students during the day who were preparing to go for further study abroad. And that was a challenge because I had to meet them every day for one to two hours for more than a year. Um, so I had to continuously come up with interesting things to do. But I was at that university for two years. It was a wonderful experience. I love the climate and the weather up there. The winter's a little tough because once you move that far north in China, in the winter time they burn a lot of coal to to keep the people of the cities warm. So in the winter time it can get kind of grayed over with pollution. But during the spring, summer, and fall it was very beautiful because living on the coast in those seasons, the air keeps the sky really blue. Uh, the wind keeps the sky really blue, and the air's pretty fresh. Now, after that, I ended up moving back to the south because my girlfriend at the time, who is now my wife, and her family and a lot of her friends live in the south, so ultimately I have found myself drawn back down to the south, and I came to work 
in uh, Guangdong province. Now I'm working at a school called Guangdong Peizhang Shui Yuan, that is Guangdong Peizhang College, and it's a couple hours north of Guangzhou. And uh, the thing I'll tell you that I love most about working at this school, a school that I've been at for about four years now, is that I have the opportunity to teach elective classes. So that has given me the opportunity to continue to grow. If you've been teaching this a similar kind of subject for years in China, you will know that your mind started begins to stagnate. Um, I I believe that perhaps after four, five, six, maybe seven years, you can really become a master of a subject. But then after that, you're just you're kind of on autopilot. So. The lesson I learned here is that if you can find a school or a job that is going to give you the opportunity to, to design and teach your own elective classes, that is a surefire way to continue to develop and improve your skills. Um, it will not be easy for you at first, I think, to teach an elective class because it will be something outside of what you've normally been teaching in your past experiences. But maybe it's something that unites you to your passion and so your passion will get a chance to come out and infect the students um, who will also learn to love this subject. So it's a way for you to continue to learn and grow. When you interview with different schools, see if they offer the chance to teach elective classes because I think you would really love that. It will build your resume. It will build your skills because you'll get outside of just teaching language and the students you will encounter a different flavor of students because they will be signing up to have that class with you because they want to, not because they have to, as is often the case with the language classes and the oral English classes. All right, now before you go, I have a question for you. I want to know if you can tell me about the places where you have worked and taught and what that was like in the comments section because I really am eager to know what it's like in other provinces and other cities that I haven't been to, so maybe we can open a discussion about that. Also, don't forget to like and subscribe again because I am uh, continuing to put out new videos like this one. Hope you enjoyed it, guys. Good luck out there with all of the teaching that you're going to be doing, and I'll see you back here next time at my channel, Matthew Boyle. Bye-bye for now.